Hi everybody, Pastor Brian here. Welcome to this sacred time of worship together. We're glad you're with us today. You know, it used to be common on TV to have these, what they would call man on the street or person on the street interviews, where they would, you know, just have a reporter go up to people on the street and just randomly ask them all the same question, just to get their idea about how people were feeling about something. We thought that might be a good way to approach the messages that we're going to be sharing in worship for the month of August. And so we decided to tackle some of the big theological questions of our time, questions that have a lot to do with just the world that we're living in. And we decided to ask a handful of theologians within our congregation to share their particular thoughts on those questions. And so you're going to be hearing from them a little bit later in the service and all throughout the month of August. But before then, we thought we'd put the question to you so you can be thinking about it. So today's question is, if God loves us, why are so many people dying from COVID-19? It really gets to the question of suffering. If God is a benevolent God, if God cares about us, if God loves us, then why do people suffer? Why are people sick and in the hospital? Why are people dying from this virus? I invite you to take a little bit of time as we prepare to enter into this uh, period of worship together to think about that. What does that question mean for you? Have you come across an answer to the idea of suffering and God's role in all of that? Do you have other questions related to that? Maybe you want to share a little bit of what you're thinking about in the chat this morning or pose another related question or just let people know what you're thinking about. What does that question mean to you today? If God loves us, why is there suffering? First of all, I don't think God causes coronavirus. So to my way of thinking, there's not really a reason to blame him and say, why would a loving God send the coronavirus? Because I don't think he did. Um, I had a Sunday school teacher one time when we were talking about suffering and he said, the question isn't why, it's what are we going to do about it? I don't think God creates uh, plagues. I think when there's evil in the world, whether it's a natural thing like a, a virus or an earthquake or man-made evil like the Holocaust or um, uh, the, the, the people beating up other people in the streets, I think the question is not so much what God did uh, because I don't think God creates evil. But what I think, I think the question it poses for believers and Christians is, what are we going to do about the suffering? What are we going to do about the injustice? Because if we believe in God's justice, uh, the question is, are we going to get busy and do our part or do what we can? Mm -hmm. um, so I just turned the question upside down. Um, why are we not doing more mm -hmm. or doing something uh, about suffering from the COVID and, and suffering from people who are hungry or suffering from people who are out of work because of COVID. So I just turned the question upside down. Um, I think if you, if you picture God as a person who is like a king or a dictator who has um, total control over uh, his realm, in this case it would be the world, and can, can cause anything to happen, that God wants to happen, like pulling strings and making this happen or that happen, then that's a legitimate question. And it's a question we would be um, very interested in knowing the answer to. But I don't see God as an all-powerful person or, or being, B-E-I-N-G, not being, um, that, that controls the world in this way. I see God more as um, a force of love or um, a caring spirit, which doesn't have complete control over what's happening, such as the COVID uh, virus. In scholarship, they call this the question of theodicy, right? How can you have both a loving God and evil? And uh, I don't have a good answer for the for that I mean it's it first raised I feel like with the Holocaust was when America really wrestled with 
American Christians really wrestled with this and, and probably European too, but how in the world did we let the call, how did God let the Holocaust happen? Um, if God is loving and the Jews are God's chosen people. And I don't, I don't think anybody has um, a good answer for that, but I do like what you said about God causing suffering. I don't think that suffering comes from God. I think that suffering is a natural um, part of existing in a world. You know, I think that um, that evil or things that we denote as evil just exists. You know, the virus doesn't have malicious intentions. It's just something that doesn't react well with our bodies. And so we are in constant battle with those things. I think that the evil that results from our actions or our inaction um, is, a, is an even better question <laughs> to maybe bring up is why do we allow evil to exist and to to carry on the the question has to be preceded by the other question uh who is god and what is god like um so in in my mind god uh, created us and loves us and cares for us and um so God is very concerned about the people who are sick and dying from the virus, but um, God, God created the world. <laughs> and, and so we're just, we're having to deal with what the world is and God cares and uh, will respond to um, our needs as, as we're able to ask him for response to our needs. If God is a force of love and is, um, is kindness and caring, then when we're dealing with the world as it is, this is what can actually change things, I think, too. For example, the virus. God didn't cause the virus. That's part of, of um, I guess, the laws of science, the laws of nature that has come in. But people who are caring for other people in the hospitals, at homes, the um, scientists who are looking for uh, vaccines for this, this is where the uh, spirit of caring and the force of love comes in and makes a difference. I mean, it changes things. And so I, I see God as being part of this, not causing anything to happen. Neil, what do you think? What you said. <laughs> oh, well. Okay. No, that's a cop out. Uh, yeah. I find it a little odd in some ways. Uh, it's a change in my thinking that I always thought in things in terms of good and evil. And yet, I, as I got older, I realized that I, I don't always have the right perception of that. I don't see accurately what is good and evil at times. Something may appear to be evil at one moment, and then at some later point, I look back at it, and my feelings have changed a lot about that event. And that's, that's one, of the, one of the bits of the stew that I throw into the pot with this kind of uh, question that, that arises. Another one is that um, we're stuck with um, a job, it would seem like. What, what would we do as people if we, if we didn't have a challenge in our lives? And if we did not have to deal with things a lot, uh, and if we did not have to feel like at times we're threatened, or that we've been offended. And when we mix God in with that, I'm not real sure if we're not just doing it because we're looking for a, a parent to come and rescue us. And that's legitimate too. I get into such a mess 
in my life occasionally that I look for a rescue and um, it may or may not happen. And uh, that's just part of, that's part of life. And I, I really have difficulty explaining it in terms of, of, of God even. I don't think that God very often reaches in and changes situations um, because they are painful for us, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think that God gives us one another as a source of comfort. And he gave us our brains, um, to, which we have used in so many wonderful ways and also in so many hurtful ways. And so I think maybe the better question is, how in the world can we allow evil to continue to exist when we know ourselves how painful it is. Now the alternative is to believe, uh, essentially if you, if you decided uh, God caused all this, uh, then God is hostile and the universe is simply unfriendly to us. Mm -hmm. uh, we live in a hostile universe. That's possible. It could be true. I can't prove it isn't true. But, uh, well, I don't believe God created evil. But I do believe that God created what is. And in some form or another, this virus has come out of what is. And God, as you say, expects us to uh, respond in, in a caring way to help and to relieve the people who are suffering. God expects us to do God's work in that respect. Yeah, I, I think the example is uh, Moses. There's a bunch of evil going on in Egypt. Get your button gear and do some of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I, you know, getting back to what God is like, I mean, I'm sure God is crying uh, with all the uh, suffering that's happening because of the, the virus and, and other problems that are going on. Um, God cares for God's children. He created them. And, uh, like a mother or a father or a parent or somebody responsible for other people. Uh, God doesn't want us to hurt, um, but God can help us and relieve our hurting by using us, like Tom says, by using us to uh, help relieve the problems that are evolving. You know, God didn't just say, okay, I'm going to create this virus. But on the other hand, the virus has come about because of what creation is. So, um, so there, we, God cares, and we, because we care, have to do something about it. It's always been easy to say, well, God sent this. But, but God didn't send this. But he will give us a way to, you know, to handle it. There are questions that just can't be answered. Like, uh, if, if God is good and loving, then why do these things happen? And it, the, the, only, the only possible answer I can think of is that God either is participating in this or God is helpless to do anything about it. And maybe there's another answer that is out there somewhere that would satisfy uh, somebody's uh, question. But uh, I'm just happy and secure and warm in the feeling that whatever does happen, that God is with me. And that's really what I look for in the end. I, I can't always get my intellectual questions to answer, but if there's a presence of love in whatever happens to me or happens to the people I love, um, that's all I need, in theory. <laughs>